uh, egregious sin. Egregious sin, yeah. Egregious sin, excuse me. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, okay, this guy, his wife, and his family, I'm not going to have to be the note. That don't feel good. No, it don't, man. Not That's at all. why the morning it says we should be mourning, but that cat's got to what? He's go, 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 yeah. Go ahead, bro. Yep, yeah. you can't stay. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's go from there, and then we're going to go back to Leviticus 18. Transfer him to another parish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nope. That, that, there was an example in, in recently in, in this city where a pastor was caught with another man. And he left, and half the congregation went with him and said he didn't do nothing wrong. Right. He's still our pastor. So, you know, that means that the scriptures are not being applied. It's, you know, it's pretty much the bottom line. Exactly. So what you just said, let's read Leviticus 18, 20, and 22. Okay. Leviticus chapter 18, verse 20. Yep. Moreover, thou shalt not lie carnally with thy neighbor's wife to defile thyself with her. Stop. Okay, so again, remember what we said, that if you want, if, if you read Leviticus 18, the entire chapter, that, that's a good place. It gives you a whole lot of different definitions of the different uh -huh. types of fornication. Uh -huh. So this particular one here says, you should not lie carnally with your neighbor's wife. So meaning that this woman, she's committed to another man, uh -huh. and you should not have sex with her or do any, any kind of sexual things with her. That's what the scriptures are saying. Right now, read verses 22. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is abomination. So the example of what you just mentioned, of this preacher or whatever is sleeping with another man, the Bible is telling us that what? If you do that, two men sleeping with each other, that's an abomination. Okay? And it's fornication. And when we read in the New Testament in 1 Corinthians 5, that what? People like that should not be in the congregation. We should be mourning people like that, not following after them. Oh, that's my pastor. I, even though he did that, he's a good guy. He's got a good heart. And I, I like him, so, you know, I'm going to follow him still. I'm, I'm, I don't care what y'all say. Yeah, okay. You know, that's an abomination in the eyes of the Lord, and that's fornication. That's one example of fornication that we should not be into. So two men sleeping with each other, it's not whatever floats your boat. Two women sleeping with each, with each other, that's wrong in the eyes of the Lord. And that is fornication. And if you really think that that's just in the Old Testament, you need to go to Romans, the first chapter. Yep. It talks about the fornication and idolatry that we were getting in. And it describes what? Men burning their lust one towards another. Men with men working mm -hmm. that which is a season. Right, yeah. Leaving a natural use to women, leaving a natural use, so on and so forth. Burning their desire, one and women with women. So it's showing you that the same thing that we're reading in Leviticus 18 still applies to what this very day. Exactly. exactly. Yeah, that's a good point because you know I've heard the excuse. Well, that said, this right here in Leviticus 18 and 22 says two men, but where does it say two women? <laughs> yeah, because okay. you go to Romans right. 1 in the New New Testament, it brings that out right. that even though it said men here, we're still talking about women also. Exactly. And you know what? Remember we read 1 Corinthians 10:1 through 4. Right. Mm -hmm. Christ was given Moses the spiritual meat and drink to right. give right. to the people. Let's read Leviticus 18 and 4. Mm -hmm. Ye shall do my judgments and keep mine ordinances to walk or live mm -hmm. therein. I am the Lord your God. So, And then Christ brought it out perfectly like the example was brought out in Matthew 15. Don't even think about lying carnally with your neighbor's wife. Don't right. even think about lying with mankind with mankind as with womankind. Don't even think about um, uncovering the nakedness of your father, mm -hmm. you know, of your father's wife, you know, and that's what it's all about, not even thinking about mm -hmm. it. That's how you walk or live therein. Right. Okay, good. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to um, cover the other definition of fornication. Let's go to Wisdom of Solomon real quick. Wisdom of Solomon, um, <clears throat> chapter 14, and we're going to read verses 12. Wisdom of Solomon. Chapter 14, in the Apocrypha, that's uh, Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14, verse 12. For the devising of idols was the beginning of spiritual fornication, and the invention of them, the corruption of life. Okay, so this is the other definition of fornication. So mm -hmm. there's spiritual fornication, which is what? Uh, invention of idols. No, now, today when you mention that word idol... People normally don't know what you're talking about, or they'll say, oh, I'm not doing that. You crazy? 
I'm not doing that. Let's uh, list some examples. Two examples that uh, readily that people couldn't relate to. Buddha. This statue of some big belly guy, right? Sitting there uh, half naked, right? He's set up as what? Some kind of God, right? And people bow down to him and worship him. And you have a lot of our people that what are into that stuff, are into Buddhism and all that other stuff. And having these different statutes in their houses with that image. Mm -hmm. That's what? Spiritual fornication because mm -hmm. that's an idol. That's something that man has made up saying that that's a God. That is an idol and you're committing spiritual fornication if you're into that. Uh -huh. Another example is that thing over in Mecca that the uh, people the, that are uh, in the cobblestone. Uh, yeah, the cobblestone or whatever. As a Muslim, you're required, what, once in your lifetime or whatever to, to go make the pilgrimage. Yeah, yeah, the Hajj. That's an idol because that's something that man made up and they're worshiping it. What about the cross? That too. Well, that's, well an idol, was, I'm sorry, an right. idol was anything graven with man's hands. Right. right. But people even worship money. Yeah, that too. You know, then different things like that that are great. Or you know what? I'm I want to be uh, famous, or so they worship fame or trying to get famous or set that up in their lives as something that they should follow. Right, right. Mm -hmm. But those are examples of spiritual fornication, and again, the scriptures is telling us that what we should not be into those things. Uh -huh. All right, now go from there to Jude. And we've mentioned before that, um, you know, all these things, it, it seems like the norm and you know, everything is all hunky-dory hunky -dory for every, people that's doing these things. But uh -huh. you know what? Like we said before, the Lord is gracious and merciful where He's given us a chance to change our ways. And now while you're living and breathing and you're hearing these words, if you're doing it, now is the time to change. Yeah. Jude 1, and we're going to read verses 7. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them, in like manner giving themselves over to fornication. To what? To fornication. Okay. And going after strange flesh are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah. Everybody knows the story about Sodom and Gomorrah, how they were destroyed with fire and brimstone. Yeah. One of the reasons why they were destroyed, it says they were they gave themselves over to fornication. So we read the definition and we gave examples of what fornication is. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows a famous story. They saw the stranger, a man, come into their town. Ooh. Gotta have him. Man. You know, yeah, man. Ooh, fresh meat. <laughs> ah, gotta have that. Take the girls. No, we don't want them. Yo, who's that? I, I want to sleep with that person. Fornication. We just read that two men sleeping with each other is an abomination, and that's mm -hmm. fornication, sure. right? So human sexual intercourse, other than between a man and his wife, or the devising of idols, which is what the people of Sodom and Gomorrah were into, mm -hmm. fornication. It says they were dis they were destroyed and set forth as an example. We all know the story, so that story is an example for us that are alive today. That saying, you know what? If we don't get it right and if we don't stop, we will also be destroyed, just like they were destroyed. Right. Exactly. That's an example. Go ahead. Can I just bring up one point though? See, because that was what judgment. Right. And people think that the Most High is not about judgment. But I'm going to read something. We went over it last night. I just want to bring it out when you went here. It clicked. Hebrews 9. I'll read it real quick. Um, Hebrews 9, verse 27. Talk about all the greatness that the Most High uh, 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 blessed us with as far as Christ being a perfect sacrifice. And we don't have to depend on holy temples and priest to go in there that's appointed at this time to do this and that because mm -hmm. Christ did all that he's the perfect tabernacle perfect sacrifice right right but now understand this Hebrews 9 verse 27 and as it is appointed unto men once to die but after this what the, the judgment, judgment. Yep. so if we don't come out of mainly like all these forms of fornication uh -huh. that we in when we die guess what's left for us the judgment. judgment, right? What is the judgment based on? 
It's based on the works that you did while you were alive and breathing. Right. So when you die, now you're going to face judgment. Because we just read, pointed once for men to what? To die. die. Mm -hmm. And then what comes after that? Judgment. judgment. Yeah, exactly. If you judged and seen as a fornicator, you read the scripture, neither fornicators. Don't mm -hmm. be deceived. Right. They're not going to inherit the kingdom of heaven. Yeah. So if it's not the kingdom of heaven, when that judgment comes, what is it? Destruction. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, like what? Is. Sodom and Gomorrah. That's exactly. why that's an example. Eternal mm -hmm. fire. Yep. Exactly. Go ahead, bro. All right, good. Good. So now we're running low on time, so we're going to read two scriptures here. To what are the solutions? So we saw the two different definitions of what fornication mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. The first definition we covered thoroughly about uh, human sexual intercourse other than between a man and his wife. What is the solution to that? Hebrews 13, verses 4. Hebrews 13, verse 4. It reads, Marriage is honorable in all, the bed undefiled, the whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. Marriage is honorable in all, so guess what? Men and women have emotions and they have things, I, you know, I just, they have things, okay, I need a wife or I need a husband. That's fine because there's nothing wrong with that. But do not go out and commit fornication because the scriptures are telling us marriage is honorable in all. If you don't have a wife or a husband, guess what? You have to be patient and wait on the Lord, right? And deal with a man or a woman according to his will and someone that's following his commandments as well. Because marriage is honorable in all and the bed on the foul. But whoremongers and adulterers or fornications, fornicators, God will judge. So you're going to be judged if you're doing those things. So marriage is what we want to deal with, a true marriage according to the scriptures. Mm -hmm. That's one solution. Let's look at the other one. Go to Acts 17. So this is the spiritual fornication. What's the solution to that? Acts 17 and read verses 24. <clears throat> God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands. Oh, go read on. Neither is worship with men's hands as though he needed anything, seeing he giveth to all life and breath and all things. Okay, so the one true and living God does not dwell in temples made with hands, okay, or with anything made with hands. So when we go to these places of worship, like the Baptist Church, the Pentecostal, he's not in those places because those are temples that were made with men's hands. So if that's your whole focus, saying, okay, that's where God is, and that's where I'm going to get my salvation from. Those uh, things were, were set up based on idol worship. That's what you have to understand. So he's not dwelling in a place like that, okay? Read verses uh, 29 and verses 30. Okay. For as much then as we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stone graven by art and man's device. So it's not about you wearing this holy cross on your chest. Okay, what's that thing that they say? My Jesus piece? Yeah, Jesus piece, yeah. It's not about that. So, okay, it's not. he's not made by graven art and man's device. It's not about that. God is not into that. That's not him. The true and living God is in heaven. Now read verses 30. This is the point. And the times of this ignorance God winked at, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. Okay, so the times of this ignorance, so again, you might not have known what you're doing or that you're committing fornication. And if you now you know after the show, guess what? You have to repent because now you know. Now there's no excuses. Okay, and with that, we're going to say...